G'day everyone, it's Empress Crusade here um, today with a base painting tutorial. Um, we're going to be painting these um, desert terrain base pieces that I've used here on my towel units. Um, very, very simple um, uh, scheme as you can see. Um, just nice desert, rocky. I've used a bit of lichen on there, desert colours, oranges yellows and browns goes really well with the grey um, and orange uh, colour scheme of the tower units. Um, so we're going to be painting one of these today, one about this size for my tower commander who I haven't painted yet um, and I'm going to show you a couple of little extra bits as well um, that I haven't done to these bases here but these are just an example of what they look like uh, when they're finished and the tower ethereal here as well just nice simple bit of sand and cork used and then the lichen on top a bit of dry brushing here and there um, so no airbrushing um, it basically it's GW spray cans uh, we're going to base it with chaos black spray and then we are also going to use the Xandri dust spray from games workshop and then just a couple of paints on top I'll run through those paints now Okay, so the two paints we're going to use on top of the Xandri Dust is Screaming Skull as the first highlight colour. Just a, a quick dry brush of that and then Pallid Witch Flesh just on the edges of some of their cracks and, and to pull out um, a little bit more detail on the models. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it. I'll show you the base we're going to do. So it's about the same size as that one. In fact, it's exactly the same size. Um, now, obviously, I haven't painted the Commander yet but uh, I will get to that and then we'll mount him on. Um, so I'll show you the way that I do it um, using a little bit of cork, a little bit of sand. And um, also, I've also had these come in the mail uh, just recently. These are some resin pieces of broken uh, rubble, I guess, or statues. So you can see it's sort of a, a face that uh, might be submerged partially in the ground. Uh, so we're going to add that to the detail. These are from Cyborg Miniatures. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, you can see a couple of nice looking faces there. It sort of finishes off the, the theme, I guess. Um, and um, because it's a commander, I wanted to put an extra detail on his base. So uh, let's go ahead and start. I've got to remove him from the base, nice and easy. Um, and then I'll uh, put the cork and sand on. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so just a tip about using these bases um, after I've put a model on there. So when I sort of test fit a model onto a base, I will make sure that I only glue it very, very lightly on so that I can get it off in order to um, uh, use the base. Uh, but here's the base and here's the glue I'll be using. Um, I've used this for well over a couple of years now, uh, Loctite Precision. It's a very, very thin super glue. Um, but has a very, very good nozzle on the end. Um, this stuff will glue anything together. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, I saw it once on a YouTube video of someone making a base and I've used this since and it's absolutely amazing. So if you've got this in your hardware store, pick it up. It's generally quite uh, cheap. Um, so that's amazing stuff. Okay, I've got my cork here. This is three millimeter cork and it's just a tile uh, basically. I can't remember where I got this from, honestly. It's been such a long time and I've got uh, quite a few sheets of it, so I've never had to rebuy it. But anyway, um, if you can get hold of this uh, or any other cork, um, you know, go ahead and use that. Uh, this is uh, non-specific, I guess. It's just some normal cork tile. There's a little bit of undulation on it um, and little uh, holes and cracks and, and so on and so forth that add to the texture of the the rock, as we'll call it, uh, on the model. Okay, so we're gonna use that. I've got the two resin pieces here that we're gonna add on as well. And I've also got some sand here that I've pulled from my garden outside. And the reason I use it from the garden is hopefully you can see, there's actually bits and pieces in there that aren't just grains of sand. There's little bits of wood, a little bit of grass in there, chunks, little small and large bits of rock. It gives it a really good texture on the model. Um, so you haven't got this flat um, uh, 
base texture, you know. Um, so that's what I use uh, for the sand. And of course, some PVA as well. Okay, you'll need that to glue the sand down unless you want to lose some other glue, but I recommend this. PVA wood glue is fine. Um, we'll probably leave it dry overnight um, just because it's quite cold here at the moment. Uh, so it's not going to dry in a hurry. So uh, once I've glued it all together, I'll come back um, 24 hours later and we'll film the rest. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is get your cork. You want to break it up just using your hands. Just break it up into bits and pieces. Make it random. Make it look, you know, obviously these are rocks. They're not uh, supposed to be square, so um, keep them random and start test fitting them on. And remember the, the model, okay, so here's the model, here's his pose. Um, try to figure out how you want him to stand and how you want him to, to, to pose on, on the model. So I'd like to keep uh, him on top of some of the cork and the reason I do that is so that there's more uh, depth to pin the model to. So what we'll do is we'll drill a hole in his foot and a couple of pins and they'll pin into the top of the base. So the more stuff we have to pin through on the base, the better. Um, there is another option, of course. We could even use these resin pieces and um, have him flying out of one of these resin pieces. Um, so that's an option as well. So I'll, I'll try and figure that out and then I'll glue these pieces down, okay? Um, and then we'll come back and we'll get the sand on. Right, so I did decide to go for uh, this piece here on the base and basically it's just stuck down with the super glue, very simple. Um, now the way that he will stick to the model is with a rod coming out of his toe it'll go into a slot that will drill and he'll sit there like that. So nice and high over other models, um, it'll look quite cool I think. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the PVA glue here and an old um, old brush. I'm going to brush the PVA glue across this. It needs to be quite thick. Um, I think that's where a lot of people will go wrong is that um, they put the PVA glue on too thin and the sand just comes off or it's just not thick enough to give it some real good texture. So we put it on quite thick. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so there's the PVA. Um, it's quite thick. Hopefully you can see that there. Um, there's no gaps anywhere to speak of. It's all flush up against um, the, the rocks and the face there. Don't be scared to get it on any of that uh, because that's really gonna help the effect. It's gonna make it look like things have been there for a long time. So um, with the sand, very simple. Piece of paper down. And basically just get your sand and Drop it on. There's nothing, nothing fancy about it. Just dip it on. Get it all over it, nice and thick. Done. Give it a shake. Now I'm going to let this dry overnight, so I don't really need to take the uh, the sand off. But I will, uh, for the sake of showing you that it's easy to clean up as well if you use a piece of paper. So here's the sand. Give it a tap. Um, and just leave it like that. Leave that to dry for either a few hours if you're in a warm climate. It's a bit cold here at winter in Perth. Um, so I'm gonna leave that overnight just to dry so it's nice and solid because when you dry brush this later on, you don't want the sand and bits to be coming off because then your paint will come off too. So um, leave that to dry as, as long as you can. Um, so we'll do that. Um, but as for the rest of the dirt, very simple. Just fold your paper up and funnel it back in. You're right to fight another day. 
Okay, so I'll let that dry overnight and then we'll come back and I'll show you what we do with the painting. All right, so there it is. I've um, let that dry for 24 hours now. Uh, it's very, very dry, uh, clearly. Now, I give it a good scrub with a toothbrush uh, to get all the dust and the, the loose um, sand off. Um, obviously, don't use a brush like this if it's not completely, completely dry. Um, otherwise, it'll just peel everything off. Uh, so that's uh, dry and ready to receive some paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, spray it with Chaos Black from Games Workshop. And then I'm also going to let uh, that dry uh, for probably an hour um, and then put the Zandru dust spray over the top so making sure nice uh, good coverage on, on both. You can actually use uh, the Zandru dust uh, paint if you wish to paint over uh, the base, uh, the black coat. Uh, I'm going to use the spray obviously it's quicker but make sure either way that it's really really completely dry um, beyond uh, touch dry. Uh, before you start dry brushing afterwards as well. Okay, so I'm going to do that and we'll come back. Okay, so there it is, ready to go. Um, I wanted to uh, bring out the detail of, of this face a bit, so what I'm going to do is wash that with Agrax Earthshade uh, just to pull out some of the details because it's quite a detailed piece. Um, so I'd like to bring some of that out and sort of differentiate it. Uh, from the rest of the piece. I did think I might paint it uh, uh, sort of a grey stone colour but I think that'll be too much so um, I'll just darken it up with um, some shade and then we'll dry brush it with the rest of the, the base as well. Okay so let's do that. Okay, with that done, let's go ahead and dry brush the whole base with a Screaming Skull. Got my paper towel there, I'll put it over here, and Screaming Skull. Good shake and a nice big dry brush, I'm using my old one there. And we're going to just very lightly dry brush the whole thing, okay? So, get a large, large majority of it off onto the paper and you just want to brush it across really lightly. You don't want to leave streaks, just build it up slowly like so. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move straight on to the lighter colour, which is the Pallid Witch Flesh. Uh, no need to stop and let it dry for a while. Um, it's pretty much dry anyway, that's why they call it dry brushing. Uh, I'm not going to use this brush, I'm going to use a smaller brush. A much, much smaller brush. So there it is. Um, it's a very, very small dry brush. All we're going to do this time is go along the edges of the stone. Maybe a few patches here and there on the dirt and then a lot of the edges on here to bring them out as well. Same process though, nice and light. You don't need to um, put too much on. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only thing left to do now is to uh, paint the rim black. Uh, use a bad and black for that. Just a little hair there. Um, yeah, a bad and black, and that's the base pretty much, um, apart from gluing on the uh, lichen, which we'll do after I paint black.
Right, so I painted the rim black and now it's time to glue the lichen on. Uh, this is natural lichen. It's, um, it's basically like a fungus, I guess. Um, so it's just easy to tear up into smaller bits. Uh, I've got uh, four different colors here, a couple of different yellows and um, an orange and brown. Um, I'm basically just gonna tear this up into little bits and um, place it around the base. Um, so keep in mind where the model is going to be. Uh, in this case, uh, in terms of the feet, I mean. In this case, this one's gonna be uh, floating up here uh, on top of this, this statue. So um, I'm free to put lichen wherever I want on the base. Um, try to refer to other models that you have um, as to how much in terms of um, lichen to put on um, to keep it sort of similar to the rest of your uh, army. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and uh, do that. I'm using super glue, uh, but you can use um, PVA glue for this as well. I prefer super glue just because it dries so damn quick. Um, but PVA glue can sometimes grip a bit better. Uh, that's why I've got this prodding stick. I'll push the lichen down, as you'll see, into the super glue and it'll get a good foothold onto it. Okay, so first of all, um, let's see. Might just rip some off. I kind of want to make this face look like it's been there for a while. So I might put some around the face like that. Um, maybe a different color as well, this orange. Just um, mix it up a bit, make it look natural, I guess. Um, and um, yeah, just go nuts and have fun with it really. Okay, so there it is. It is completely finished and ready for mounting the base. Uh, so what I'll do, I won't show you on camera, you can do this yourself. I'll get a drill and I'll drill a hole in the top of this uh, statue and I'll drill a hole in the foot of this model and then I'll pin them together with a small rod and they'll stick in there like that. But I'll do that once I've painted the model. Uh, hopefully later on you'll see on the channel this guy uh, finished and painted on this base. But anyway, that's how I do my tower bases. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial and hopefully you find it useful as well. Um, a couple of little techniques in there. And um, most important thing is to make sure that everything's dry, uh, both the glues um, and the paints before you start dry brushing. Dry brushing is quite a rough uh, technique, so it's easier to, to pull things off um, if they're not glued down properly, uh, including paint. So that's it, I hope you like it. Um, more to come on the channel, obviously. Um, thanks for watching and uh, take care. Um, next battle coming up uh, next week is Orcs versus Tyranids. It's a um, battle that I've been waiting to put on the channel, uh, a horde versus horde, so it's gonna be a good one. Uh, stick around and you'll see that coming up next week. Um, cheers guys, this is Empress Crusade.